which got back yesterday, milled all these. Um, this is a big Douglas fir. These are actually the smaller parts of it. So we're gonna have, I've got a trailer full of them and back of the van's full of them as well. About a ton of it in total. Milled it all day yesterday. So most of these are gonna become workbenches all the way around the workshop and in the man cave room. Uh, they got some lovely details to them. Made sure to keep the knots to the side like that. Really nice bits of wood. Paid 40 quid for this log. That's just uh, wood by the weight. So obviously it took me all day to mill it. So very cheap, but you know, there's a lot of time and work goes into it. Uh, this piece here is going to become the window sill for the bigger window in the man cave. I'm gonna have to cut a bit off of it, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, we'll use that for something else anyway. So yeah, unload the van, get all this wood out because there's a lot of weight in it. And then uh, we'll set about making the uh, next window. So I actually already made this uh, this seal out of two pieces that I had, two smaller pieces and glued them together. But <clears throat> they're two different sizes and they just didn't look that, that good really. And it would have been nice, I, I could have made it nice and got the fit really good. Um, but now I've got these really nice big pieces. I, I can't resist having having like these beautiful curves and stuff in in the in the man cave. So I'm just using that one as a template now. We we'll use that wood still, but I'm just let's say just going to use that as a template. We'll draw across and across and make it exactly the same, but just with a nicer single piece of wood. It's better off. There we are. Doesn't that look nice? Love these little knobbly bits sticking out. Okay, let's mark these up. Really just kind of replicating what we did last time. The angle's looking right. route them out again they sit in there someone said uh, in the last video why haven't I put a drip edge in why are these sitting in there because water's going to get in there I think uh, I think you're all forgetting that this whole front of this building has a whole nother area in front of it that's covered over water will never touch these windows like there's three and a half meters of roof overhang so yeah Go back to the uh, the model video, the very first um, video I did about the workshop with the scale model. You can see this is not the front of the building. This isn't fixed into the windows at all, it's just just dried out of it. Yeah, that's what the problem I've been having is it was just too wet, but now it's lovely, it's great. Really needed this weather.
much nicer. But remember, it's going to be roof outside there, so there isn't going to be a huge amount of light come through this window. Be quite a bit through that one, but not really through this one. Okay, next one we're going to do is that one there. This piece is going to be one half of it. This will be the join. So, just laying out the join, half lap join. So, that's going to be the underside. We'll cut a piece away from this. So we'll just use these dividers to uh, put a line across there. Okay, that should be pretty good. This isn't a, uh, a perfect precision join. So what we'd we'll also do is get that shoulder plane, set it at a bit of an angle, so I don't want the bottom to touch before the top. So to make that an easier thing to do, cheat a bit set the angle of the plane so it favours the bottom we just run it along there because then we know we won't bottom out at the very bottom Now we can set the shoulder plane as normal, run it tight along that edge, clean up that joint. Take off any little high spots, that should sit pretty tight now. There we go, so then the other one comes in, sits in there and we can add a uh, kind of, well it's a curve but just out of two straight pieces right so there we go, piece number one is sitting where it's going to sit piece number two is rough cut sitting roughly where it's going to sit that end isn't too critical if we lose a little bit there doesn't matter too much, we've got plenty of space so now, all I do is I come in I can mark there 
I can mark the back one and then I can just draw a line between those two points and that'll be my join and obviously once I've got that line I can measure back from that and do that line easy alright not bad for a first fit oh, it looks worse on camera than it is uh, just because there's a lip um, so I need to take off you know, five mil two and a half mil off each bit and just do a, take a little bit out of this middle it should squeeze that's so looking pretty good it's got a little bit of a lip but once I clamp that and glue it plane it that'll be fine looks all right from the front still need blending in and stuff take these corners off blend it in yeah good that is generally I did it in the roundhouse too how I make straight bits go around corners it works well it's actually the, how all the frames done in the roundhouse actually half laps that cross over each other so you can turn a corner hello little tiger what you doing I think she might have been taught a lesson earlier because she was trying to eat a bee we see right so got them taken apart again cut the side pieces I'm gonna go and route them out same as we did on the other ones there's a lot of considerations I have to take on it uh, for this window because there's gonna be a roof beam in the middle of it because it's quite long it's got to have a support in the middle so we're gonna have to work that out <clears throat> and the wall plates also gonna have to be half lapped in because it's going around the corner but yeah we'll figure it out so let's go and screw side on the bit I just routed out we'll put it back together and then we'll figure out what we're gonna put in the middle of it okay so that one's laid in so uh, gonna have to build a lintel the same way that um, that will have a half lap in it and then we're gonna have like a nice round tree stump sort of thing that's curling out of the middle that's gonna be one of the main supports for it that's the plan for it so I need to cut that there across there so it, the lintel then comes in and sits in it it's only a small window really but it's very complicated and then we're going to have a curve there, oh sorry, there, which will be plastered in and a curve there, which will be plastered in and it should look nice and curvy and wiggly and, and awesome as you can see it's not even remotely straight anywhere really so that's going to be cool so on the back side I'm going to have to come up with something to attach the windows to the back but we'll figure that out to trim some bits off of the chainsaw, do some carving yeah, I think that is the plan. I've just put a screw up through from under here into here to hold it all flat and it's flat down on there. So now I'm putting this straight edge across. And now I'm gonna mark this across here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra so I can plane it down, but and then we we'll get that bit cut off. I find doing like saw cuts like this a very accurate way of marking because you can, you know, you can put the saw blade up to it. I do quite a lot like this because then I can run the chainsaw exactly and use the straightness of the chainsaw bar to do that. Barking this here, look. it's actually got mushroom growing under it, under the bark. That is a mushroom, and it smells like mushroom too. I don't know what kind, but it's a fungus anyway. Um, this bit of wood was actually from the same tree as the uh, as the entrance way. Remember me winching that one out. down sitting on the ground for a while so that's why it's uh, got a bit of rot in it well 
a bit of fungus in it, it's not rotten, as you can see it's, it's fine. It's just uh, started, the sapwood started to rot, but now we've got it off the ground, it'll dry out, and that process will stop. And get this debarked and de-skanked. And we're playing off the top, and then we've got to build the lintel. Okay, good morning everyone. So, this is what we're going to be doing. Put, fit in this uh, this big four inch piece so essentially this window's got to support the roof I can't remember if I already said that but there's going to be a roof beam somewhere along here I don't exactly know exactly where but it needs to be able to support a roof beam so this overhang will sit against bags incredibly strong and one the other side and then the center obviously is transferring a lot of weight down into the bags via through that big two and a quarter inch uh, slab seal there so that's going to be very strong so yeah i'm going to half lap those bits in and then we'll fix it all make sure it all fits nice and then we'll uh lift it in probably take it apart and lift it in place yeah just started doing this half lap on here i was trying to do it with my little uh, electric chainsaw but the batteries are so knackered it just uh just won't really cut it's got no torque because it's the uh, the batteries just die so uh, generally you just need to spend money on batteries at the minute I need new batteries for the for the um, my electrical setup because I just use a couple of car batteries and it's not really sufficient for what I do um, they do keep up when the hydro's on but this time of year when the hydro slows down it is very hard for me to um, maintain good levels of power really. even though I've got the sun out and there's plenty of solar coming in can't store enough of it so at some point soon I need to just uh, buy some new batteries but I've been putting it off because I was hoping to have at least the bottom floor of the workshop in a position where I can uh, uh, move some stuff into it because I've just got no space in the shed at the minute and if I get new batteries take up what little space I do have and turn it into battery storage so yeah in a bit of a predicament but gonna have to order batteries soon because like I say it's not cutting it didn't have any power really this morning it's all right now the sun's out because it's been so dry, the hydro's only been on low. It's only got about 70 watts or something coming in at the minute. The new turbine I'm making will, will help that a bit. Like I say, if I had a nice battery storage, you know, I'd have enough power for multiple days just from what we would have bought in on the solar yesterday. So. It does make sense to do. A nice join under there, look. I don't know how well you can see that, but fit in nice to it. Okay, so that piece is up, sitting level, so now we come in, mark the long side, so mark in there, and I've marked from the back already, and join those two lines together, cut that, and then that will sit in there, but it obviously sit high, and then we can mark back from that line, the 100mm, and then we take out that bit and they'll slot together. Alright then, join's done. So now I've got to fix it from the top. So we're just going to put in some of these big long bolts, washer on them, fix that down into, into here. Okay, there it is. I've uh, put the windows, rested them in and checked and they fit. There's going to be building around them and plastering bags on top and all that kind of good stuff so 
um, it's not gonna actually look like that really because it's gonna so that curve will stay the set oh sorry that curve will stay there so you'll see that curve and then there'll be plastered another little cut that corner off there might leave that side because that that's got a bit of an arch to it and then we'll come in and just cut that corner there i think <coughs> that should be looking nice view from all around it joint turned out well that'll probably be plastered in but if not we'll um, smooth it off a bit more than that and from the back okay so now i'm going to take those big heavy bits off the top and then try and lift it in try and get this in place the helpful dot now it should just about fit but it's very tight You have to mess around with these quite a lot. There it is in place. So, what I'll do is fill into it. So, put two small ones in there and try and get a whole one wedged in there. And there, nice and strong. Same over there. And then that's going to be really solid, and I'm happy to put a roof beam on, on anywhere on that will be fine because you know that's a four inch piece of larch that could that could hold a good proportion of of the roof on its own so i'm very pleased with how that's worked out obviously all that dirt behind it that'll be gone and you'll be able to see out of that uh, you won't be able to see very far out of it because there's going to be a, a roof overhang and so on but but it will let some light in and it will make you feel like you're in a cave so i've just been building in around the wall here um, one of my bags isn't quite level but I'm just going to fill that in with cob probably but uh, yeah <clears throat> I got it in but it was trying to lift up the seal because I wasn't really pushing on that because obviously that's going to be load bearing so I've uh, over stuffed it and now I've got the full weight of the tractor pushing down on that and I'm going to leave that on there for an hour or so just helping that settle pushing all that weight down keeping it all compacted and then I know that the weight isn't going down through the side of the window it's going on the end in down through the bags which is what we want and I'll do the same this end when it comes to it yeah good I know now that I can put a, a roof log anywhere along there I'll be happy with it I think I'm gonna leave that video here because it's uh, been quite long already so uh, yeah we're gonna leave that there and uh, next video be uh, just doing earth bags and going all the way around with the wall plates, tying all this in, and then it's going to be roof. Exciting times.